Let's take a look at board game acquisition from a retail perspective, non-Kickstarter perspective. For some time, I was buying a good amount of my board games on Amazon. And over time, things began to kind of shift. Now, backing up a little bit, I will say that even to this day, a good portion of my uh, board game purchases tend to be retail, supporting a local store, giving back to the community, um, growing the community locally, and uh, understanding just from a perspective of running a business myself, a non-gaming, non-retail business, just how important connection to the community is and just how important locally it is to be juggling all these balls in the air and keeping everything running, that little bit of help goes a long way. So I want to respect that. I want to give something back. I don't mind paying full retail at a retail store on there. It cuts down on the acquisitions a little bit. I don't pass judgment for those of you who feel otherwise. Um, Certainly, financial resources are are very, we need to figure out how, when, and where we're going to spend them. I will say stores, uh, local stores, and we're not even talking about a boutique store. We're talking about just uh, general releases, a general release board game that charge above market value or charge above um, retail that's crazy. That, that, that I can't do. So I do my best to support locally. Online, I'd say most of my games now, where I can't buy them locally because they're just kind of um, a very, very specific focus, would be Miniature Market. Now back to Amazon. Uh, naturally, Amazon more or less has price beat. And I'm not talking about um, some sort of out of print board game like a Runebound Second Edition Midnight selling for like five hundred dollars. No one is going to do that. Absolutely no one. But buying current releases, retail releases on Amazon, are, are going to be discounted. They're going to be a lot cheaper, and you're going to get Prime or you're going to get free shipping if you're crazy enough for some reason you want to do next day. In a lot of uh, instances, it is affordable. But here's what has been turning me away. The packing, not the counterfeiting. Um, we'll, we'll explore that a little bit. But the packing, so much of the Amazon packing does not work for board gaming. Um, you buy something from Miniature Market, and this is an unsolicited plug um, for them and to them. I'm not getting anything in return. When I buy a game from Miniature Market, it's custom fit to the box. There is no wiggle room. There's padding around it. There's bubble wrap. Um, The box itself, their warehouse must be pristine. There's no crushed corners. There's no dings and dents. Everything is flawless. I've never had a problem. Numerous times that I bought board games from Amazon, if they weren't damaged in transit, then the corners are a little bit scuffed. They're a little bit banged. I don't know. Are they falling off the shelf? Is a robot going bonkers and, and dropping them and picking it up and dropping it and picking it up and dropping it and picking it up? Um, it's not mint condition. But clearly it's unopened. Clearly it's, it's unopened. And then the packing itself, so many times it's just like the board game uh, or the components thrown in a slightly padded envelope or a box that is mismatched, doesn't really fit, has minimal packing, and the corners are crushed, it's damaged. I know board games are going to get wear and tear. I know that's going to happen. But I'd like to be the one doing the wear and tear, building the history on it. Now, a buddy of mine, um, it's interesting. Certainly, I have eclectic board gaming tastes, and they're influenced by uh, war gaming and role-playing games. If you've been following my channel, you know I love dungeon crawlers. You know I love miniature-based games. Uh, but a friend of mine, we've got a little bit of crossover there. He is the Euro king. He he loves worker placement. He loves resource management. He hates dice. Um, It has to be a card-based system, and there has to be ways um, up front to manipulate it. Really a a puzzle-type game, and and he's a great board gamer. He purchases through Amazon, and he's been noticing more and more the level of counterfeiting, of counterfeit games that um, he's getting. And they're close, but a couple of them uh, early on, about a year or two ago, he would he would get some counterfeit games, but they'd be pretty close, and you don't want to pay to return them to Amazon. You don't want to deal with the hassle. Often, you've opened them up, and it's only when uh, reading stuff on uh, Board Game Geek and other places, when you're looking at components, you're like, mine's a little bit off. 
And we're not talking about something like WizKids, where every game component is different, mismatched, misprinted, and just, just crazy. We're talking really mainstream releases here that are off. And it's like, I think I got a counterfeit. I did get a counterfeit, but it's close. It's really, really good. It's like the counterfeit pinnacle zenith of Rolexes, like you're ready to go on there. But even the counterfeit quality, the bootleg quality on Amazon has taken such a nosedive in the past year and a half, two years, where the knockoffs, it's like a knockoff of a knockoff. It's its just awful on there, and Amazon doesn't seem to want to address it. So for that reason... If you're into it, possibly avoiding Amazon. But for me, the primary purchase would be local if I can. Paying retail, it's all good, but you're going to charge me $10 more because you're brick and mortar. I, I can't do that. And again, my, my heart is going out there. I want to connect. I want to support. I want to grow the community. Otherwise, it's miniature market. And if I can get it for less on Amazon, I often don't. Even if it's 5 or 10 bucks, simply because, and I know cash is cash, right? that cream cash rules everything about me but the chance and the number of times that i've gotten burned with that um no that's that's kind of where i am acquisition wise right now with board games